Yes, hello once again and uh, thanks for retuning to Classic Dirt Bike TV where of course we do our very best to bring you uh, more of those old school and uh, vintage dirt bikes from way back uh, in the day. Now, we do have some very nice bikes still to feature in the coming weeks and months uh, throughout the winter here on CDB TV. So if you like your old school vintage dirt bikes, then I do hope you will consider subscribing to my video channel in order that you don't miss out on some of those very nice bikes that are soon to be published. But right now we're going to take a look at an old friend of mine's race bike from a couple of years ago. Now, this particular machine it was built by Ian Robertson and uh, Ian uh, put this bike together throughout the winter of 2018 and 2019 uh, with a view to racing it in the coming uh, season. So we're going to get right into that video now and take a look at Ian Robertson's uh, lovely YZ400 Yamaha. And so this uh, featured Yamaha 400 was just one of many bikes that were owned and built by my old friend and classic bike racer uh, Ian Robertson. Now before we get into the details of this bike, first up it's uh, not a stock original 400 Yamaha by any means as it is uh, a bit of a combination of some different uh, Yamaha models but again it was never uh, meant to be one of those uh, blinged up concourse uh, show winning uh, motorcycles. Uh, Ian's bikes were all built with one purpose in mind and that was to be able to use them each and every weekend and how they actually looked was never really a factor for Ian because it was more important that they were all functional and reliable uh, when they were used on the track and this uh, YZ400 it was just one of two bikes that Ian had built for the forthcoming uh, 2019 uh, racing season. But uh, Ian, or uh, Lugs as he was more commonly known, uh, was a bit of a bike nut and uh, Ian loved everything about motorcycles, uh, whether it was uh, dirt bikes, uh, road bikes or whatever and uh, as long as it had a couple of wheels and an engine then Ian uh, would always try and make it go as fast as it could. Although when it came to dirt bikes and classic or twin shot racing, uh, Ian tended not to buy his race bikes from dealerships because uh, buying stock original race bikes uh, ready to go just uh, wasn't what Ian was all about. But for him it was all about uh, building bikes to his own personal specifications, even if that meant uh, using parts from various other makes and models of machines and it was all about the fun and the challenge of creating something uh, personal which uh, of course brings us to this particular uh, 400 Yamaha that Ian put together uh, during the winter of 2018 and uh, 2019. And so uh, basically Ian's uh, Yamaha here is a combination of uh, a Yamaha MX400B and a YZ400C, although essentially it's all made up from a 1975 Yamaha chassis and motor with various other parts then bolted onto it. So there's probably no need to leave comments in the video feedback section saying that the parts aren't right on this bike for a 75 or 400 because when Ian built the machine he had no intentions of fitting the stock original parts for a 75-400 so he just wanted uh, the bike to handle right and be quick on the track uh, once he'd finished uh, putting it uh, all together. So let's just uh, begin with a look at the bike's chassis which is a 1975-400 frame uh, which is made of uh, light gauge tubular uh, steel and uh, as I remember I think this was also uh, the year that Yamaha switched from the older twin shock rear suspension to this uh, now much more modern style uh, monoshock uh, configuration that uh, had a single suspension unit that ran 
uh, from the rear swing arm right up uh, to the frame's headstock. But in terms of its design and its construction, uh, these 75400 chassis were certainly the latest thing in that year and it, it laid uh, the grounds for other manufacturers of off-road bikes uh, to develop their own versions of single shock uh, rear suspension uh, systems. And in 1975, these new uh, Yamaha chassis were certainly a revelation to the motocross world and uh, at the time it seemed that everybody was uh, rushing out uh, to dealerships to try and get their hands on one. Now the bike's uh, power plant is a YZ400 two-stroke motor, also from 1975, and it's uh, fitted uh, with a reed valve block, uh, fuel intake system, and a five-speed uh, gearbox and wet uh, multi-plate uh, clutch, which is uh, driven direct uh, from the crankshaft uh, and not like uh, some of the other uh, manufacturers like Michael who uh, tended to use those uh, troublesome primary chains to connect uh, these parts together. Now fuel for our YZ400 motor is fed from a 38mm uh, Makuni carburetor which I assume is uh, probably what would have been bolted on to this motor in 75 but uh, then again with Ian's reputation for chopping and changing parts on his bike uh, this might not be that uh, stock 1975 uh, carburetor that was fitted uh, at the factory. But as you're aware these YZ400 engines did have quite a decent amount of compression for a single uh, cylinder big bore two stroker and uh, they were also equipped with this decompressor valve uh, near the bike's exhaust port which uh, as I recall I think it was uh, a kind of semi-automatic system uh, which was connected uh, to a valve at the front uh, by a cable that then uh, ran up and underneath the tank and then onto the rear of the engine. Now I'm not sure how it all worked in reality but uh, I do know that uh, when you turn the motor over on the kickstart the valve uh, did open and close and you can see exactly uh, where that cable ends up connected here uh, to the rear uh, of the engine. But again uh, Ian's old YZ400 still appears to have its stock original exhaust pipe fitted which uh, to be fair does look like it's uh, dent and ding free after it's uh, 47 years or so on the racetrack. Okay maybe it's in need of a quick rub down and maybe repaint but uh, that's not something that uh, Ian ever bothered about because uh, he did build his machines as race bikes and not something uh, that was very nice uh, to look at. On the other hand, uh, this uh, tailpipe here, without question, is certainly not the stock Yamaha 400 part, as uh, I think the original would have had a much smaller and compact uh, tail cone made probably uh, from steel and about maybe the size of a Coke can. And uh, my guess here is that uh, Ian just couldn't locate uh, the proper tailpipe to fit to this machine, and uh, this was just another old uh, battered alloy part from a, a more modern bike that uh, he had lying around the workshop so he's just decided to make uh, good use of it. Now to provide those vital sparks for the 400 Yamaha motor the engine was equipped with a modern electronic ignition uh, system which uh, naturally uh, made the motor uh, start much easier and uh, continued to supply sparks even when that big power plant was running at full throttle. But as far as I'm aware uh, this 400 motor in Ian's bike is uh, relatively stock and uh, I was never really told of any upgrades or other work that had been done on this engine so in that respect uh, quite a nice original uh, power plant because uh, these were very good engines 
uh, back in their day and they did have a decent spread of power uh, right through uh, the rev range. But the engine was also uh, fitted with a five speed gearbox and uh, Yamaha's uh, V-type reed valve induction uh, system which uh, as I recall I think it had six stainless steel petals inside it and uh, it certainly helped uh, keep that motor uh, running smooth and almost eliminated uh, the bogging down in the slow corners that were uh, sometimes associated with uh, piston port uh, two-stroke motors. Now the right and left hand uh, crankcase covers uh, also helped to keep the overall weight of this 400 motor to a respectable level uh, as these were uh, constructed in that uh, lightweight, highly uh, durable uh, magnesium alloy. And so as we uh, now move on to the bike's front suspension, uh, which uh, looks like these could be a pair of Maxton suspension uh, units, although to be fair they still look like a pair of Yamaha forks, but uh, as I said previously, uh, when Ian was building his bikes, he would uh, always just use what he had lying around the workshop and if he didn't like a particular make and function of certain parts then he'd simply remove them and fit uh, something else in its place which is more than likely what uh, Ian's uh, done here. Although uh, without doubt uh, both the front and the rear hubs are certainly uh, Yamaha parts and uh, as you can see uh, Yamaha were still using these old school uh, drum brakes on their motocrossers in that year but uh, that's not to say that these uh, weren't up to the job because uh, these older drum brake systems still had enough stopping power to draw up this uh, 400 uh, machine but it wouldn't be too long before uh, Yamaha would then ditch these older braking systems for the much more uh, modern hydraulic disc brakes that we are so familiar with uh, today. And as we move on to the rear hub, uh, which again uh, was an older drum brake design and uh, this also had uh, quite good stopping power for a bigger 400 uh, machine and uh, this uh, also had the brake uh, backing plate cast in magnesium alloy just to try and keep the overall weight of this bike to a respectable uh, level. But uh, as I said previously in the video, uh, 1975 was the first year that Yamaha changed from the old twin shock rear suspension system uh, to a single uh, monoshock unit that uh, ran straight from that rear swing arm right up uh, to the frames uh, headstock uh, at the triple clamps and although this is uh, not too visible in these shots because it's uh, tucked up uh, so neatly underneath the seat and fuel tank uh, but for its day uh, this was certainly outer limits high tech uh, which of course would go on to pave the way for those modern motocross suspension systems that are all uh, very common on today's uh, motocrossers. So the next item to take a look at is the bike's gas tank, which on Ian's 400 is the stock original 1975 item. And this, as you can see, is showing all of the signs of being a factory fitted 47 year old fuel tank with its slightly fading graphics and a bit of wear and tear on its paintwork and even although uh, this alloy fuel tank has never been painted or touched up since it was brand new it still has that look and the patina that you only get from something that's true and original but once again a nice uh, comfortable looking seat on our 400 Yamaha which will uh, help protect uh, those crown jewels uh, if you encounter any massive bumps on the racetrack and although this uh, bike did uh, have an improved uh, monoshock suspension system uh, it still uh, never had the massive suspension movement of today's off-roaders uh, so every millimetre of padding in the seat 
uh, will all help towards a much softer and more comfortable experience uh, for its rider. Now, most of uh, all of the other plastic fixtures and fittings on Ian's 400, as uh, far as I'm aware, are the correct items uh, for its year of manufacture. And uh, as far as I know, the front and rear mudguards uh, are correct uh, or even original. And if they're not, then uh, these certainly uh, look like they could still be uh, genuine uh, Yamaha uh, replacement parts. And so uh, up at the front of our uh, 400 Yamaha, we have a replacement set of rental handlebars and not the original uh, factory fitted items from that year. And uh, also on uh, the left side of the bars, you can see that Ian's uh, fitted an easy clutch which is uh, basically a mechanism that you fit in between the clutch lever and the cable that operates the clutch arm uh, near the gearbox. And uh, this uh, little unit uh, takes out a big percentage of the leverage required uh, to pull the clutch in. So uh, they're uh, ideal if you have a bike with a strong or heavy clutch, as these little mechanisms uh, certainly do take out most of the strain of trying uh, to pull the clutch in. And uh, once again, another uh, good set of alloy Magura ball end levers on both the clutch and uh, front brake. And uh, also a nice pair of Yamaha dust covers there as well, uh, as these will uh, help keep dust and moisture from getting into the ends of the cables and gumming up all of the workings. But again, another very nice bike uh, built by Ian. Uh, not a fully original machine, of course, but uh, this bike uh, was built uh, to be raced and not to be looked upon as an authentic 1975 uh, restoration of a YZ400. Uh, so again, there's certainly no need to leave any more comments saying that the parts on the bike aren't correct because at the end of the day, uh, they were never, ever uh, meant to be. So there you have it. We've had a quick look around and talked a bit about uh, Ian's creation. So uh, let's see if we can just get the great man to fire his bike uh, into life. to say it's just uh, great to see Ian again uh, even in these pictures and short uh, video clips because we did uh, unfortunately lose the great man uh, in 2019 but uh, Ian will always be remembered for his cheerful banter around the paddock and of course his riding skills uh, on the racetrack. <laughs> 